From the first day, the weapons that human had, they were not satisfied with it. And he wanted to make it better, so everybody was scared of him. This story continues to today, and humans are still not satisfied. You guys know the nuclear bomb. If it explodes anywhere, it's gonna destroy everything. There's even stronger ones. Hydrogen bomb, which is pretty similar to the nuclear bomb, but it has a bigger blast radius and much more radioactive. You think the hydrogen bomb got people satisfied or are they looking for something more powerful? I have to let you know that yes, humans are looking for stronger weapons still. One of the most powerful weapons that has been designed but not made yet is the cobalt bomb. As you guys know, the first nuclear bomb was made in 1945 and tested. The success in this bomb caused two cities to be blown to bits in World War II. Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. You guys already know what these bombs did to these cities. We're not gonna talk about whose fault it was, but the Americans after this explosion were not satisfied with the blast. And that is why in 1950, they came out with the cobalt bomb concept. The difference between an atom bomb and a cobalt bomb is that the atom bomb works with uranium or plutonium, but cobalt bomb is made with cobalt 59. Don't think that the cobalt bomb has a more powerful blast or is gonna cause a lot of light or fires around the world. In this department, this bomb is not strong that way, but the deadly part about this weapon is that it has an insane level of radiation. A lot of scientists called the cobalt bomb, dirty bomb. As you guys know, the biggest tested atom bomb is the Tsar bomb, and it has a power of 100 megatons. And that means, with the Tsar bomb, you could basically destroy any city on Earth. Big cities like London, Paris, New York. But Cobalt Bomb doesn't have the power like that. And it doesn't destroy any city. But if it's exploded anywhere, Cobalt 59 turns into Cobalt 60 and the radiation starts to move. The radiation that comes out of this bomb compared to the regular nuclear bomb that goes away in a few years, these do not go away. The radiation lasts decades and if anybody is in that vicinity, they're gonna die. They say for the cobalt bomb radiation to go away, it's gonna take more than a century. Where does it stay? The place it blew up? No. It just keeps on moving everywhere. From the explosion zone, the radius of the radiation keeps getting bigger and bigger. The scientist by the name of Stephen Schwartz says, if you blow up a cobalt bomb in Washington DC, not only is it gonna destroy the entire country, but it will destroy Mexico and Canada. If you use only nine grams of cobalt in a bomb, the explosion is not gonna be big, but the thing that will get destroyed is life on that area. Nine grams of cobalt is gonna destroy Manhattan completely. And that means basically no living thing can breathe there. If a healthy human being breathes around this area, they will not live for more than two weeks because before cancer starts forming, they're gonna die from radiation poisoning. Even if a person stays in that area and breathes for around an hour, the cancer is already starting to form. As you guys remember, this is a bomb that only has nine grams of cobalt in it. Scientists say that in the area that this bomb has exploded and you want to stay there and breathe for one day, you have to come back in 53 years. 
and that's the point that you can easily breathe for one day only. But if you stay there for more than one day, you will start forming cancer. After a hundred years, you could kind of start living there. And in that area, the cancer rate, it's still a lot higher because the radiation levels are a lot higher than the rest of the world. If you want that area to be completely clean, you're gonna come back in 140 years. And that's for a bomb that only had nine grams of cobalt. The cobalt bomb has another name and that's called the doomsday bomb. Pretty much the end of the world bomb. Nine grams of cobalt destroyed Manhattan and every life living in there. And that was for 140 years. Let's say instead of nine grams of cobalt, there's one kilo or 10 kilo or even more. Just think of the disaster that it will cause. Scientists say with this bomb, with the right amount of cobalt, you could end the life on earth. They say if you make cobalt bombs that add up to 500 tons of cobalt, the world will end. Every building is standing, roads and highways are still perfect, every house and apartment is untouched. But this bomb only affects living things. It kills everybody, nobody's gonna stay alive, even plants are gonna dry out. They believe that one creature might stay alive and bacterias are gonna stay alive as well. But what is that one creature that will stay alive? Can you guess? Everybody knows about it. The one that stays alive is this one. And you could kind of say that it will adapt to Cobalt 60. If you've seen the video about cockroaches, you'll know what kind of a life it lives. Just like we said, this bomb is not built and it's just a concept. Even though the concept is from around 70 years ago, it's still not made yet. But Cobalt 60 is used around the world and the biggest usage is to sterilize medical equipment. And sometimes is used for radiation therapy. The information we have shows that nobody has built the cobalt bomb, even the Soviet Union that wanted every deadly weapon known to man. Even if they built it, nobody has the information. The technology to build this bomb is not only in the US, but a lot of other countries have it. But we don't know if anybody has built it or not. If you've seen the movie Goldfinger by James Bond, the movie from 1964, there's a bomb in this movie that James Bond is planning on defusing. That bomb is the cobalt bomb and they mention it in the movie. From one side, you could tell that humans are not that dumb because if they were, they would have built this bomb. And in another way, we're scared that they built it but they haven't showed it yet. I hope that things like this are never tested. <laughs>